Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In my last video, we focused on LXCs, and that was a basic overview of how to create them in Proxmox using a Debian 12 image. Now, as I said in that video, these are not exclusive to Proxmox, they're part of Linux, but I did mention that I wanted to come back and do hardware pass-through. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. And I'm not just gonna demonstrate it using a privileged container, we're actually gonna be using unprivileged containers, and I'll even show an example whereby I'm sharing a single GPU and splitting it between three LXCs. What does all that mean? Well, before I mentioned in the previous video about LXCs and privileged versus unprivileged, and I guess analogy might be a little bit like running a Docker container in a privileged mode, whereby if it was compromised, a container, it could potentially impact the host. That same sort of thing applies to LXCs, whereby if we run a privileged container, if that container is compromised, it could have a significant impact on the host, i.e. it could have a full compromise. So by using unprivileged containers, typically that comes with some trade-offs, i.e. you can't do advanced things like pass-through without some complex setups. Well, I've scoured the web and I've been playing and I've come up with such a config. Now, this is going to allow us to pass through a dedicated GPU or an iGPU. I've only tested this with Intel, but it should work for anything because the process will be the same. And this has enabled me to share that GPU with all the security benefits of unprivileged with three LXCs. Now, because there are a few config steps to go through, I don't know exactly how well this will last. The instructions I'm using are about two years old and it still works, so that bodes well. And that was when Proxmox was running on Debian 11 and it still works now in Debian 12 and the latest release of Proxmox. So let me show you how to get this set up. I'm really excited by this and I'll continue to go down this path because I would love to be in a position whereby I can run my Kubernetes infrastructure on LXCs that all share a single GPU. At the moment, the issue I have with VMs is that you can only pass through a single device to a VM on consumer devices. I know you can do it with enterprise, but that's really expensive and not really very energy efficient either, in some cases. This approach would mean that I could have half my hosts on one physical machine with a single GPU pass through and half on the other with again a single GPU pass through and because in my case they're both Intel my worker nodes should be able to assign pods to those different ones and yeah it might not be elegant because remember you can only attach one pod to one GPU so for every pod I want to have a GPU I might have to spin up a new LXC a new node but it would give me that capability with very minimal overhead. Anyway, enough waffling, let's jump into the configuration. So back over on my beloved test bench for all things Proxmox and GPU pass-through. You can see it's an old one, it's a 6700K, this is a 6th gen Intel. And if I look over here, you can see that I've got three CTs, three containers spun up, like I showed you how to do in the previous video. Now if we pick one of those, we can look in the options, and we can see that it's an unprivileged container, yes. Now, if we connect into that container, so I'll do a console, I'll do an IPA. You can see that the IP address here is on 7.142. And now if I load this up in my browser, I've already deployed Jellyfin on here and I'll show you that I've got GPU acceleration for transcoding working. That's gonna show that A, it's working unprivileged and B, that all three of these CTs are also sharing the GPU. I'll show you that later. So I've got everybody's favorite testing video here. And if I start this and I head down to the cog and just make sure, yeah, I've set the quality to be not native. So I'll change it to 480 just for this video. And then if I click the I here, you can see that it's transcoding at 310 FPS. So great, that's definitely using the GPU. So how did I get here? Let's get back into Proxmox and I'll show you how. So the trick to this is through user permissions. So an LXC, as I mentioned in the last video, shares the underlying host's infrastructure, i.e. its setup, its folders, its devices, etc. But it puts those in its own namespace, especially when unprivileged. Now the issue that causes is that it creates segmentation between the two environments. And that's good for security, but it's bad for device sharing. So 
what we need to do is actually create relationships between the hosts users and the LXCs users. In summary, we need to make sure that the LXC has access to the specific devices that we need. In this case, the GPU. So let's now dive into the console for Proxmox and we'll get this up and running. So if we dive into the shell for our Proxmox host, I'm going to run this first command. It's going to be a cat and it's going to do the etc groups. So this is going to show me all the groups that are on my Proxmox host. And the ones we're interested in are video and render because those are the ones that we need to give the LXC access to, which Jellyfin within Docker will then use. So running that command, you can see that render is 104 and video is also 44. And currently those are assigned to root. Defaultly, you'll see that they're not assigned to a user space. We'll come onto that in a moment, but that should give you a hint as what we're doing here. Now that we have those group IDs, we can move on to the next step. The next step is to actually amend the sub group IDs. So if I go into here, you'll see that there's already a default mapping at the top. However, I've also added this mapping here. So I've said that the root 44 and 104, remember those were the group IDs we just found, are also mapped to one. Now we'll use that in the next command. Don't worry, all of these commands will be available on my GitHub and you can find that in the description below. Now that we have that done, we're onto the complex part. So what we need to do is we need to change directory and we need to go to etc, then we need to go to pve, and then we need to go to our LXCs. And so if I do an LS in here, you'll see that I've got 101, 102, and 103. And if you look on the left, that's those CTs here. Now I'm gonna edit one of these just to show you what it looks like as this is already working. So I'm gonna open 103. And if I look in here, there's a few things. Firstly, ignore the bottom, this green section. That's just a snapshot. It's a good idea to have those and I left it in just because I think it's good practice. But it's the top part that we're caring about here. It's this bit all down here. Now, most of this was created using the template, i.e. the process I walked you through in the last video. The bit that we're concerned about is everything underneath the unprivileged one. What do these mean? Well, where you see lxc.cg group devices, this section here, these are the devices that are on your host. So how do we get those? Well, if I come out of this for a second and I run the following command, this will list all the devices on the host in the dev slash DRI. And if I do that, I get the following. Now, this might be a little bit different to you because this is my setup using both an iGPU, i.e. that 6700K has an HD 530 on it, and also, as you know in my previous videos, this has an Intel Arc A380. So if I did an LSPCI, you'd probably see those devices. Here at the bottom on 03, you see the A380. And if I was to scroll up, you can see here on the two, I've got the HD 530. So let's clear that and let's go back to the previous command. The important things here are these group IDs. You can see 128, which is assigned to render 128, quite handily and 129, assigned to 129. Now, traditionally, the iGPU will be picked up first and the discrete GPU will be picked up second. That's not strictly always the case, so you will have to determine which one it is, but the 128 in my instance is the iGPU and the 129 is my dedicated GPU. So let's now head back into that config with this knowledge. Heading back in here, you can see that I've passed through the 129. So that's the discrete GPU. Next, I've mounted 129 as 129. So here, a bit like a Docker mount, we've got left on the host and we've got right in the LXC. So basically it's mounting this GPU as though it were a physical machine. It's giving it the exact same mount options and that's because that's what it expects you could probably change this, but you'd have to do more tweaking down the line. After that, we get onto the secret source that makes the unprivileged work. And that is where we are doing ID map, the clues in the title. 
So we are mapping the IDs that we saw earlier. So where we created that sub GUI ID and we saw those IDs, we're mapping those which remember on Proxmox are owned by the root. And we're saying that another user, this LXC, can use it, but only those specific devices. So it's still an unprivileged, but it basically has hardware access to those devices. That's great because we're kind of following the principle of least privilege. We're giving it access to just the parts it needs without having to risk anything else on the host, albeit there's always a slight risk with containerization. So this first one has the U, which is a user, and we've seen that already in the subgroup IDs. That was already set. The next ones you'll see all have the G for group denotation. So what do all these mean? Well, the second one here, this group 100,044, this maps the group IDs of 0 to 43, the LXC namespace, to 100,000 to 100,043 on the host. The next is where we get the group ID, 44 in this case, to be the same. So that means that the group ID of the owner for the, I think it was the render, or it might have been the video, it doesn't matter which one, whichever that one's relating to, is the same within the LXC. The next sections get a little bit more complicated. And this is because we're using slightly different group IDs. In this instance, we're using 107 and 108. And you'll also notice here that 104, remember that was the ID of my discrete GPU. So that's being passed through here, but it's being set to 107 and 108. Now, why are we doing those? Well, we're tweaking those just so there isn't an overlap between the groupings. So in this case, we've bumped it one higher and one lower. And once we've completed that, there's only one more thing to do, and that's to change the group assignment on the Proxmox host for the render and video group. So you saw that in the first thing that I did, but I'll show you how to run that now. And it's similar to how we use a local user and add it to the Docker group so that we don't need to put in things like sudo each time. So we need to do the following command. We need to use a modify ag for the render and video group, and we need to add the root user. This will allow the root within the LXC access to the host's device. And once you've added that, you'll be in the position that I'm at on the screen here. But I'll now walk you through setting up a test GPU 04 and put this all into practice. And hopefully by the end of it, we've got another instance of an LXC in an unprivileged mode having GPU hardware acceleration. So let's create a new CT. We'll click the wizard up here. And I go through this in more detail in my previous video. And I call this one test GPU. 04. Unprivileged is ticked, exactly what we want. I'll give it a password. I'll load my SSH key file. I'll hit next. Crucially, I'm going to use this Debian 12 because in my last video, remember I mentioned that Proxmox, the current version I'm using, is using Debian 12 and it's a good idea to match up the LXC with the host. I'm going to give this one just 20 gigs for testing, but obviously change this to whatever you need. CPU, I'm just giving it two cores and I'm limiting it to two cores as well. Memory, I'm just going to give this one three gigs. And I'm going to give it a DHCP just so it gets assigned an IP address automatically. Everything else is going to stay the same. DNS will use the host settings. Everything on there looks fine. So I'm now going to finish this. If you want to see a slower walkthrough of all those steps, do check out my past video. So now that's created, if we do an LS, we should see now 104. Yep, we do. Great. So we basically now need to copy the config that I had from the previous machine and paste it into this machine. And remember, all of this documentation is available on the GitHub, so don't be copying off the screen. So I'm going to look into that file now and I'm going to add the lines that we need that I described earlier. And now the important thing here is that you focus on these groups here. So in this instance, it's gone to 28, which is my iGPU. Now you can leave that if you're only using the iGPU. Again, as I mentioned, 
just make sure that these IDs match up and you can check those using the command I detailed earlier. In this instance though, I know that my dedicated GPU, my ARC A380, is actually 129 and that's how I've got this configured. If I wanted to, I could change this to use my iGPU, maybe I will do that in the future, but it also means that I could fully use the iGPU for something else. So this all looks good now, so let's do a control O to save that and we should be in a position now to spin this up. So coming out of there, I'm going to click on this container, I'm going to click start and fingers crossed I should be greeted with the login page if all of this went correctly. Yes I am. So let's log in. And that looks good. You'll know if something's wrong because typically if you try to do this hardware sharing and you haven't got the permissions in place, when you launch an unprivileged container it will fail and you'll see something in the proxbox logs which shows that error basically. Go back, double check your permissions, and then hopefully when you start it, you should go through this process. And so if I run the command to list the devices, you can see here that render D129 is available, which is my GPU. And now let's just double check using LSPCI whether the device is available. I'll need to install that first because it doesn't ship with Debian 12. So I'll do an apt update just to refresh all the repositories. I'll do an apt install PCI utils. Now that that's installed, I should be able to do LSPCI. And yeah, you can see here all of the devices from the host. And importantly, you can see the VGA compatible Intel Corporation down here, which is my A380. So now because I've already set up Docker before, I'm going to install Docker and I'm actually going to install Jellyfin as a container. So that's a containerized app running on Docker inside a containerized operating system. <laughs> it's getting pretty complicated. But the beauty of that situation is we can use our existing setup that I've already shown in previous videos and we can use it here with all the benefits of the LXC. So I'm going to install Docker and I'll see you on the other side. So now Docker's installing. The last thing we need to do is grab our Docker Compose file, which I've used in previous videos, and just make a few tweaks that will be specific to this setup. And thankfully, all we're going to need to do is to change the groups that we need to add to this and the hardware IDs. Other than that, everything should stay the same. I'm not going to be running this with a traffic proxy just for simplicity, but the labels will work exactly as before, especially if you're also going to be running traffic in this dockerized LXC. So now Docker's completed. Let's hop into VS Code and let's have a look at the Docker Compose file to get this up and running. And so having a quick run through the script again, I'll call out the salient parts. I've already been through Jellyfin a number of times, so go and check out my videos for both Docker and Kubernetes if you want to know more. But let's have a quick look. So firstly, I'm going to run this as a root because we gave the root user the access to the drive. So deleting that. You could add a user in there if you wanted to. And in that first step that I showed you right at the beginning of the video, we'd have to make sure that whatever user we specify within this container is the one that's mapped to the host's groupings, i.e. we put root. If we want a Jellyfin user, we'd have to add Jellyfin there. Next is this group add. So let's run this command here, which will tell us what we need to put in here. So this is set by default to be 128, but we're not going to use 128, we're going to use 129. That's because 129 is my dedicated GPU and 128 is the iGPU. So back over on the machine, let's paste in this command and let's see what it says. It says 107. So hopping back now into VS Code, I'm going to change this to 107. So now we've got the right group assigned. All I've done here is I've tweaked the locations just to be dot slash. So that means it's going to put it as a subdirectory in the Docker Compose folder. You can obviously change that to whatever you want. I'm just doing that for simplicity in this demonstration. And then I've also created a folder just on the root directory of slash films and I'm going to put it in slash films and I'm going to download the book bunny video. Next, because I'm not going to run this on this demonstration behind a reverse proxy, I've just opened up the ports. Finally, I'm doing the actual device pass through. 
And so here I've passed through D129, D129. Again, that's my dedicated GPU. By default, the 128 would be my iGPU. So if that's what you've got, you can put the 128 in there. Now that that's all done, we can copy that over to our LXC. You can obviously remote connect. I just haven't bothered to do that with all the firewalls yet. But once you're back on the other host, we'll create the folder structure and get that file in place. So I'm gonna paste all of that in. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna come out of there. And then as you can see, the Docker Compose is in my slash Docker Compose slash Jellyfin folder. I'm now gonna download the film to my films directory. This is gonna take me a little while, so I'll see you on the other side. But once this is done, we should be ready to fire up the container and hopefully we've got working transcoding in an unprivileged LXC. So now that's finished, let's move back to our home directory and let's run this command. And we can do a docker compose up dash D. And hopefully that will pull, there won't be any errors and we'll be able to access this on the IP of the LXC. I'll show you that in a moment. And so now that's completed, let's do an IPA. And I'm gonna to connect to 7143 on port 8096. So hit and return on the IP address. Excellent, we're into Jellyfin. So let's quickly walk through. I'm just gonna use root. I'm gonna add the media library. So I'm gonna add movies, add the folder. Hopefully film should be there. Yes, it is. Okay, next 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 finish let's log in and we've already got big book bunny excellent but by default there's one thing we need to change heading into the dashboard go to the playback hardware acceleration i want quick sync because this is an intel gpu i'm going to turn on all of these because my latest a380 supports all of this stuff there is some additional stuff here for low power this won't work by default we didn't enable this i might cover that in a later video if you guys want to see it i will allow encoding in hvec because it's much more efficient and then i'm going to hit save yep that said save so now hopefully we should be able to click on this great if that didn't work we would have got a format error and if i hit the cog now let's put it down to something like 480p Great, that's still working. If I duplicate this tab, I go into the dashboard, hit the I, you'll see that it's transcoding at 387 FPS. And if I dive back into Proxmox, and if we click on the actual host itself, you'll see that it's only using 17% of the CPU, which clearly isn't being used for transcoding because this would max it out. So it is using the GPU. And so now here we have another unprivileged LXC with hardware transcoding. And I could demonstrate by firing up all four of these machines here, all four of these LXCs, and we should be able to get parallel transcoding all using one GPU. And now if you're wondering what that looks like, here you can see I've got 7.143, 127, 141, and 142. Those are the respective four LXCs. And I've simply opened up the same one below it just to see the dashboard overview. And let's hit go. So replay on that one. This one's automatically set to transcode. Let's have a look, transcoding. Let's play this one. This one's set to, again, 480p. Let's have a look, that's transcoding. Let's play this one from the start. This one's transcoding. Let's have a look on the dashboard. This one's transcoding. Let's play this one. Set to transcode. And then if we hit I, all four of those are transcoding in real time. And as you can see, there's no stuttering, no buffering. We've successfully shared one GPU between four LXCs and they're all unprivileged. If you're wondering what CPU usage looks like, we're currently at about 50 to 60% CPU usage. So bear in mind, this is an ancient CPU, but Maybe we get another four, maybe another five or six transcodes going, so 10 in total before this starts to chug. But 
considering it's a hundred pound GPU that's pretty good value and you can see that once it's actually done the buffering ie that initial bit of rendering of the transcode the CPU usage has dropped all the way back down to less than one percent and all of these videos are still playing which you can see here in the background so thanks for watching everybody this was a lot of fun to put together and it actually solves one of the issues that I've been struggling with for a while, whereby I wanted the most efficient way to share a single GPU. My Kubernetes was getting complex because it was one GPU per VM per pod, which just doesn't scale very well. I'm now seriously considering re-putting everything into LXCs in an unprivileged fashion because I think that's a happy medium. It's going to give me a GPU to share between all of my nodes and it means that I don't have extra expense in the initial outlay of new hardware plus the operating cost and all the green credentials that come with it. So let me know what you think about this. Is an LXC on privilege with hardware pass-through going to be something that you use? How are you going to use it? Let me know. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.